Hi, so over on the world of TNT, we looked at this thing that came out of the University of Hong Kong called Rain Power, and what they were doing was basically allowing the rain to rain onto a panel, and they reckon they can uh, produce 50 watts per square meter. That's impressive. I mean, given the situation we're in, particularly in Europe, generating your own electricity is quite a challenge, actually. There aren't many options, but this looks like a real option. If you want the discussion, it's on TNT. What we're going to do here is make a homemade version. We can make a homemade version astonishingly easily. Kitchen foil, plumber's tape. All we've got to do is stick some kitchen foil onto a plastic background and then some plumber's tape on top of it. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So there's my bit of plastic with some kitchen foil stuck on with double-sided tape. I've got a bit of insulation tape here, it's uh, gaffer tape, and that's so we can hold it without actually making electrical contact. That's a bit of plumber's tape, which is PTFE, and again, some double-sided tape stuck on it. Some aluminium tape. This stuff is um, from heating and ventilation, it's used as a seal. And that's it. So I've put it in the stand, which is why we put that insulator on. And here it is, just above this paper towel to catch any water drops, because I'm going to drop water on it. This is just ordinary tap water, which is what they used in the university. They did tap water, rainwater, and seawater. And they found that tap water and rainwater worked better than seawater. Because remember, this is about the charge that's actually in the raindrop as it falls. So it's got nothing to do with the salts in the seawater, it's got nothing to do with the movement of the rainwater, it's got to do with the charge in the rainwater and how that charge is transferred on this. This is basically a capacitor. So we're going to drip some tap water on it. I've got the usual setup here with my phone on the meter and let's have a look at the meter when the water droplet rolls over the capacitive contacts because that's what you're interested in, how it rolls over it. Look at that. When we get it rolling over, we get this huge amount of energy. I mean, 100 millivolts may not seem like a huge amount to you, but remember, this is just a couple of strips of alley on some PTFE. <laughs> I think it's awesome, I really do. Now, that is just with the charge. Have a look at this. This is four of them lighting 200 LEDs. So here's a close-up, and this is when the water rolls over the contacts. Watch what happens to the voltage. See that? <laughs> okay, so it's a method that works. It works really well. But what excites me about it, what interests me about it, is remember, it's made from kitchen foil and plumber's tape. So this is something you could actually make yourself. When people make their own homemade solar cells, they're always a bit weedy because they use copper oxide. And if you want to get a decent solar cell, well, you've got to buy one. But it seems that this is something we could make. Something we can make from normal store ingredients that has 50 watts per square meter, and that is just awesome because you could actually go out and do this. Now, I understand that I'm really just demonstrating how to make a single cell and how simple that cell is, but to reproduce this on a larger scale, it would be lots and lots of small cells. That's all you're actually wanting to do. You're not wanting to build a massive cell. Lots of little small ones. Put them on a panel, and the panel can clearly be anything, any lump of plastic or wood or glass or whatever, obviously non-conductive, and you're going to have yourself an um, electrostatic 
triboelectric rainwater generator. Remember, it's got nothing to do with the movement of the water or the salt content. It's the electrical charge the water already has in it that you're collecting. It's the same thing that makes lightning. You're basically collecting lightning, which I think is just amazing. Now, there are lots of things as well for experimenters. So if you wanted to make this, you could just go out and make it. But there's obviously a lot of experimentation that could be done with this. There are questions that need answering. So is it the movement that's interesting? Is that what's generating? In which case, can we just dip this in a stream? Could we put it in a wheel arrangement? Could we flow water past it? So many questions that need answering with an arrangement like this. And the arrangement, stupidly simple to make. Kitchen fork, plumber's tank, pair of scissors, and a bit of patience, and you're off. So I thought I would do that replication. Let me point you again to the discussion on the World of TNT channel. It's called uh, Rain Power, a Major Breakthrough. And the paper that this came from, I've actually put a link in this description as well. So I hope you're as excited and interested in this as me. Thank you very much for watching the video, and please remember to like and subscribe.